Clario and the Development Patent Institute decided to uh, partner with the Future Mineral Forum on content, primarily because we shared two common visions. One was around innovation uh, and the need to do accelerate transformative innovation in terms of how mining is done uh, to meet the kind of environmental social needs of mining. And the other aspect was this move away from just being an extraction industry into really allowing countries that have resources to capture more of the value uh, of their mining and to drive social and economic prosperity in those countries. So it's really around shared values and shared ambition. I wrote two papers, uh, one around industrialization, one around responsible sourcing. So the industrialization paper was really around the notion that mining needs to move to capture more of the value, or countries need to capture more of the value from their resources. So we need to move away from the traditional extract and ship model uh, to one where we do capture more of the downstream value in terms of manufacturing, right down to like in terms of electrification batteries even. Um, so that was really key from the industrialization perspective and how do you achieve that and where do we find inspiration from other industries and other countries? And the flip side of that is the responsible sourcing. So as you develop your resources, how do you meet the environmental social needs of downstream companies? And that's termed responsible sourcing. So I thought if we could capture kind of uh, thought leadership and inspiration from both those bookends, as I call them, uh, that would be kind of valuable input and thought leadership into the discussions that uh, the Kingdom is hosting through the Future Mineral Forum. The Future Mineral Forum has, as one of its pillars, is this kind of regional approach, which I think is uh, transformational for the industry uh, and is very bold if you like. So the aspect of the combination of doing moving away from extract and ship to this industrial model and at the same time taking a regional approach to this has never been achieved actually. And by the regional approach we mean that within the region we collaborate to the extent that whilst we may extract resources in one country, processing and manufacturing may occur in another country in the region. So what's critical in that is how do you get the collaboration occurring and how do you share value across all those uh, countries in a fair way that will drive prosperity for those countries. It's very exciting and I think Saudi Arabia has a unique position to catalyze uh, that regional approach. So we've looked at inspiration from, you know, we see regional collaboration happening at ASEAN, which is the Southeast Asia trade organization of multiple countries. NATO is an example of collaboration at a security level. So the way it's, I mean, really got to bring all the countries, but all the stakeholders together and really kind of map out a shared vision of what that would look like. And from that kind of co-create pathways of how to get there. And one of the big hurdles to get over is, you know, nationalism. Countries in mining and other industries have been very loath to allow other countries to do things with their resources because there's a perception, oh, well, you're going to get the value and I'm not, and I'm not going to give you that value. So I think a dialogue needs to occur to be able to kind of, People are able to talk about that uh, and then make the compromises, if you like, and trade-offs to allow that to happen. But I think it's very vital, it's very exciting, uh, and one that I think is necessary, actually. So Saudi Arabia has a unique position. So uh, I think you know the countries that they are embracing in the region, North uh, and East Africa, Central Asia, and the Middle East have a richly endowed in resources, but it's not well explored. Uh, so there's a huge opportunity here. So I think the role they can play is providing a platform and convening all the countries together uh, to talk about how they can more you know, sustainably develop their resources, uh, do it in a way that leverages uh, the clean energy platform that uh, Saudi Arabia provides through hydrogen and solar. And so I think it's really acting as a convener and a catalyst uh, to create a new way of thinking for the mining industry. So as we think about how the mining industry has progressed with its sustainability, uh, you know, it has progressed in the last 10, 20 years, without question, but I think in the context of the energy transition. So, you know, the world is demanding an affordable, adequate, secure supply of minerals that's responsibly extracted and processed. In the time frame, what we need to do is accelerate what the mining industry has been doing because I think business as usual is not going to be sufficient and we have to accelerate the changes necessary and I think Saudi Arabia is one of the few and through the Future Mineral Forum is one of the few places where there's a much bolder ambition that's being uh, communicated if you like uh, and kind of heft by the country being put behind it to drive the changes that we need to make and you know produce essentially green minerals but I think most importantly actually more important than green minerals to me is uh, driving social economic prosperity for countries because so many countries that have resources have not really enjoyed the benefit of those resource resources and are still poor in many cases. So I think this uh, question of whether sustainability will slip backwards or go forward is a really interesting one. So I think we're seeing examples of it going forward. So we see that in the impact catalyst in South
South African at Limpopo, which is a collaboration with mining companies, government uh, and, and communities and uh, civil society to drive more prosperity from mining in a, in a more sustainable way. And in Zambia, we see this uh, social investment framework that Development Partner Institute has been working on. But I think there's a tension that's going to come up because if you think about there's a certain supply of minerals, particularly copper and nickel, that needs to occur by 2040, 2045 to meet 2050 goals. Mining is not going to meet those today. So is there pressure going to become at some point, I just need those minerals, I don't care how you do it, I just need it by this state versus I need them to be done sustainably in a way that drives community prosperity. So I think there's a tension in the system that I think is going to occur potentially in the next five years where that debate's going to be had. So we'll see. So I think the notion that you know the downstream companies, the users of metals and minerals, whether it be EV car companies, uh, people that are building wind turbines, solar panels, all that are big consumers of uh, metals, need the metals and minerals provided to them in a way that meets their environmental social goals. Um, I think this is a real challenge, to be honest. Uh, the mining industry traditionally hasn't been closely connected to the ultimate downstream users, That's, and it's only slowly occurring right now. So the Development Partner Institute with the Rockefeller Foundation has an ongoing dialogue that started in 2019, bringing all the players of the value chain together to kind of create a common vision around what responsible sourcing uh, looks like. And by responsible sourcing, we mean uh, meeting the ESG needs of those uh, final consumer-facing consumer companies. So I think there's a lot of work to be done on that. And the mining industry, I think, you know, needs to kind of change its mindset from, you know, we're going to do what we think versus how do we meet the goals of the downstream companies uh, and meet their environmental social goals. So, you know, when, one of the big debates going on uh, within the mining sector and the whole value chain, to be honest, is are, are meeting the standards that are being developed and in progress sufficient to say I am responsibly mining and processing minerals and I don't think they are to be honest. So first there's too many standards right now and there's many many years to go before the standards uh, solidify around common one or two standards. So because we have standards for every commodity, we have standards coming from the stock market, SEC, it's mind-blowing. Uh, and the problem with standards is they're kind of very compliance oriented and I'm a big view that we need to move away from a compliance model to a competitive advantage model. So how do we provide environmental social goals? And my provocation to the mining industry is they need to become net positive contributors socially, economically and environmentally to the world um, and actually set their goals higher than any standard or any industry is demanding of them. And I think what we need to do is set a vision for that and that's kind of the alternative is to say we're going to do that now so it doesn't matter what the laws or standards say, we're going to set a very high bar for ourselves and drive towards those. Uh, and part of that is becoming a development partner. So that's working with communities to ensure they see more of the benefits of the mining uh, opportunity versus so what they say is all we see is the pain, none of the benefits. And I think as we do that, that'll change that paradigm dramatically. So uh, it's a very interesting question around uh, industrialization and can the industry actually move away from the dominant extract and ship model? And to be honest, there's really no example in mining of any country that's been able to capture the downstream value of its resources. And as a consequence, I believe most countries have actually not benefited from their resource endowment. Uh, and you know, we often have this provocation that's been given to the industry that says, you, you can't show me a community that is better off once mining is left than it was before mining was there. That's a pretty you know, consistent track record, unfortunately. So I think, and no one's really tried to capture all the downstream value. Australia's trying to do a little. So I think you know what Saudi Arabia brings and the Future Mineral Forum brings is kind of an opportunity to kind of rethink and innovate around the business model here. But I think we have to do it in a regional uh, construct and because it's very hard for one country to do it all. Because many of the countries we're talking about in Africa are energy starved. So how do we move the energy intensive work after the minerals are uh, extracted to a place where you have a lot of green energy. So I think you know, it's, it's a very exciting opportunity, uh, but it's one that I th we need to get our hands around if countries are truly to uh, garner the benefits from mining. It's interesting to look at you know, what are the ingredients to make this industrialization work in, in a regional context. And you know, first thing we say is you know, kind of look at examples, where has this worked? Uh, particularly where government has directed the effort but not stood in the way of the effort. So one great example I use is Taiwan. And even though that's a single country, but in the 70s, Taiwan was a poor, 
uh, manufa you know, low-cost manufacturing country. Um, and then the government decided we're going to become dominant in the semiconductor industry, which was kind of like, wow, that's out of left field. So they set up a series of programs. So they set up policy, capital market incentives, uh, partnerships with key research institutes, an environment that entrepreneurs could thrive. And if you fast forward, today a poor, low-cost manufacturing country now dominates 30 years, 40 years forward, the semiconductor industry, and they produce 60% of the most advanced chips and 90% of all semiconductors. It is possible for a country to do that. So I think the ingredients you need to look for is, one, they need to provide a policy environment that allows an industry to thrive. Um, and not be too prescriptive about it. Uh, two, they need to allow and encourage capital flow, especially venture capital, high-risk capital. Uh, they need to convene, allow for multi-stakeholder conversations that allow for the viewpoints of and communities and other stakeholders to be kind of injected into that process. So they really need to create that environment and then they need to get out of the way and enable it. So, And that's very hard for governments. And I sense with uh, the Future Mineral Forum that the seeds are being sowed for that. So the concept of the Future Mineral Forum around centres of excellence uh, is a really good one to enable uh, the industrialization and responsible sourcing kind of initiatives that the Future Mineral Forum won. So, I mean, it's hard to find what I consider, you know, centres of excellence that really drive sustainable, you know, macro level economic change and social change uh, across a country. Obviously, Taiwan is an example in the semiconductor sector. I think one uh, is another one is Israel. I mean, to consider a country of you know, just a few million people actually has, uh, second only to the United States, a vibrant startup community around high-end technologies. So, and that's all around creating these centers of excellence around you know, entrepreneurship, around capital formation, around you know, how do you uh, drive community engagement. You know, often I'm asked, well, can't you find something around mining to talk about? And I'm like, well, you know, I think we need to look outside the industry and look for the inspiration from those, because we have more in common with us other sectors than we have different. So we've got to break out of our own kind of box and look for inspiration from other countries. A message I'd like to give to the ministers and CEOs uh, from the industry and the countries that are joining us at the Future Mineral Forum is, one, uh, be very open-minded as to the possibilities in terms of you know, a new business model, a new mindset that's required. Two, really think about it in the context of the energy transition and how do we meet the needs of other sectors and humanity to meet the 2050 goals in a way uh, that currently is hard to foresee for the mining industry. And three, I think, you know, is, and it's not an industry that collaborates well, is, you know, we need, the magnitude of the task ahead of us is greater than one country, one company, one industry. So how do we really build on collaboration amongst ourselves and put aside particular company or country, you know, kind of nationalism, if you like, and say, how do we collaborate more effectively together to move the ball down the field a lot faster than we need to? And then finally is, at a country level, think about, and mining companies can be catalysts for this, how do we ensure prosperity socially and economically in those countries um, to, that really can build off the mining wealth? So those would be my four uh, messages to uh, people attending.